This week we are reviewing a wine made from the most planted grape in all of Austria. And in the tip of the week, we're going to answer the question, how do you know when it's time to open that bottle of wine? All of that coming up next. Hello and welcome to Wine This Week with Scott Leek. Roughly one third of all vines planted in the country of Austria are from a white wine varietal known as Gruner Veltliner. The name alone is pretty much a dead giveaway for where it's from. It's either Germany or Austria with a name like that. I mean, it even kind of sounds like that might be the villain in an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. I mean, I can just hear it right now. Look out, Gruner Veltliner's got a gun. Everyone get down. That was terrible, but this is the only Austrian wine I'm going to review this year, so I, I had to do the only Austrian accent I know. The interesting thing about this wine in particular is that it's fairly unknown to most average wine drinkers, myself included. I've never had one before, so I'm excited to try it today. But in researching this, I found that sommeliers across the U.S. love this wine. Over the last decade or two, its quality has really risen and it has won some international blind competitions against some of the top Chardonnays in the world. And another reason sommeliers really tend to love this one, particularly at a restaurant, is that this is supposed to be one of the most versatile wines with food, period. So we're not gonna waste any more time, and we're gonna get straight into the tasting. Today's wine is a Gruner Vettliner by Alzinger from the region of Vakau. It is along the Danube River in Austria, about 30 miles away from Vienna. Uh, this particular one has the designation on it, Federspiel, and that's kind of a classification system they use in Austria. It's kind of a middle tier one, and for all I know, there's not a whole lot that goes into it other than it has to achieve a certain alcohol level. In this case, it needs to be between 11.5 and 12.5%. This comes in at 12.5%. So kind of a mid-tier wine and uh, so far really nice color on it. There's a slight bit of like fizz, effervescence in there, which is kind of cool. But it's a fairly light, lightly colored white. You can kind of get a look at that. Kind of a pale, pale lemon color, I'd say. Looks good. Oh my, oh, <laughs> that smells awesome. Wow. All right. Why have I never had this before? My goodness. Okay. <laughs> Jeez, that smells good. Just really bright, clean. Like it smells refreshing. It smells like just a perfect spring day. There's just this nice like lime or lemon blossom smell. There's that kind of floral kind of citrus aspect to it. Oh, this smells good. Maybe a little melon even. But yeah, there's definitely those white flowers and um, maybe some green apple. Maybe some peach. And there's a little spice in there too, which is kind of nice. I could smell this all day. This is awesome. What are the odds that this doesn't disappoint me on the palate, though? Let's find out. This is nice. The intensity of the aroma is greater than the intensity of the palate. The palate's not bad, but the intensity of the aromas is, is greater. It has a really nice dryness to it. There's really not much that I would call sweet about this. This is a dry white wine, but it's not like this razor sharp acidity like, like a Sauvignon Blanc can be. It's, it's acidic, but I'm gonna call this kind of a medium high rather than off the charts acidity. So good medium high acidity. Like I said, this is a 12.5% alcohol. I'd put it right at medium. Not much heat that I'm getting in the, in the back of my throat when I, um, you know, kind of let the finish permeate a little bit. So yeah, pretty good on the alcohol. Um, it's not light bodied, it's not full bodied. I'm gonna go kind of a medium medium low on the, on the body on this. It's got good mouthfeel, it's not, I, I hate white wines, I should hate so strong word. I prefer white wines 
that aren't thin, that aren't very, very light for the most part. This is, this is really nice on the body in that kind of medium low category of body. Mm. I hope I don't. Okay, I'm saying this to myself, don't edit that out. So I did this awful sound that I normally fast forward through so you guys don't hear me slurping the wine. But I got something that I didn't get on the palate the first time and I'm so glad I did it. So, all right, let me go, let me go through the palate real quick. I got kind of a yellow apple, not like a tart green apple, a nice kind of golden delicious yellow apple flavor. Um, there was some white peach and I, I really want to distinguish a white peach from a regular peach. I mean, it's more of a delicate flavor than a big ripe juicy yellow peach. So white peach, um, maybe a little honeydew melon and there's something kind of green in here too. Not, I know honeydew melon's green, but I'm thinking more vegetable, vegetal in like celery or something. There's something green there that I can't quite put my finger on. But when I did the slurp there, I got what is kind of the quintessential finishing note of Gruner from what I've read that I didn't get on my first take and I did get on the second one with the slurp and that is a little hint of white pepper. And it's not off-putting, you'd think like, oh God, who wants pepper on their white wine? But that little bit of white pepper on this was was really nice. And like all the pieces coming together, I can see why Psalms love this as a food-friendly wine. The the acidity level in the body, the, the, the intensity, the aromas are nice. There's just something about the, the cleansiness of every time I've taken a sip uh, that I think is going to go really well with a lot of food. And, and I think, I know I'm getting ahead of myself with the food pairings here, but like I've read that this goes well with sushi because it can handle wasabi, it can handle ginger, and I can see why now that I've had a little bit of this. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm digging this wine. So all in, um, from a balance perspective, I everything is in, in nice balance. I'm gonna score this pretty well on the balance factor. Length, the finish is a little lighter than I would like. It's not bad, but it's just kind of a medium length finish. The intensity of the aromas, again, massive points for that. God, yeah, awesome. Intensity of the flavors, not quite as great overall get some good points for that. And then complexity, despite the fact that I've picked up on a couple of different things here, I'm not gonna call this an overly complex wine. Granted, I paid, what did I pay for this? $21, so I'm not expecting an incredibly complicated wine at $21, but it was good. Um, so all in, I'm gonna call this 6.5 points on my on my 10 point scale. Um, I will definitely have this again. I don't, again, I don't know why, I've never had it before. Um, but I'm going to be consuming the rest of this bottle, not right now, but I'm gonna consume this bottle and I'm gonna get a Gruner again. And I give it a thumbs up for anyone else wanting to give it a try. So like I mentioned for the food pairings, I think sushi would be great with this. Um, because of some of the green elements and that little white pepper, I think this would go great with a lot of different salads and, and different vegetables. Like asparagus is always a hard vegetable to pair with any type of wine. Um, salads would have arugula in it. There's the kind of the bitterness with arugula. So there's a lot of things vegetable wise that I think would go well with this. And then, yeah, any kind of seafood, something like sushi uh, would be great with this. So cheers. One of the most common questions I get about wine is, hey Scott, I've got this special bottle. How do I know when it's the right time to open it? My short answer is that wine is ready for you to drink it when you're ready to drink it. Don't overthink this. Don't worry about aging a wine. If you feel like it should be aged, it's probably gonna be just fine to open it right then and there. But if you have a bottle that maybe was a wedding gift and you wanna open it on anniversary, what anniversary is the right one to open it on? Well. A lot of factors go into it. Number one, most bottles of wine sold in the US, like 90% of them are consumed within 12 hours of being purchased. And most winemakers that are selling in that five, 10, 20, $25 price range are designing their wines to be consumed young and right when you purchase them. 
They know that that's what most consumers are doing with their wines. And that's perfectly fine. And I would recommend the vast majority of you wine, the wines that you buy, I would say the right drinking window for it is before midnight tonight. That's, that's when you should open that bottle of wine. But for those special occasion wines that are a bit more expensive, particularly if it's a red, very few whites are age worthy. But if you've got a nice red, I would say five to 10 years is that ideal sweet spot for most reds that are age worthy. I did a video a couple weeks ago on Gewurztraminer, I think it was two weeks ago. And in that tip of the week, I talked about the proper storage conditions. So if you can go back and watch that video, if you can follow those protocols, those recommendations on storage conditions, then you can age a bottle of red wine, five years, 10 years. Most of the ones that are in this room with, here, with me here, these are 10 years old on average and they're getting to about their ideal drinking age in, for my palate. Some of them are gonna go 15, 20, 25 years, depending on the particular bottle. And the factors that go into it are the things that provide wine at structure. So it's tannin level, acidity, the sugar, the alcohol, those are all the factors that can help make a red wine really age worthy. So if your special bottle of wine is a Pinot Noir, for example, that doesn't have a whole lot of tannin. Now it can age because it's got high acid and if it has high alcohol, that might be a little bit more age worthy. But a Pinot Noir, I would say, I wouldn't recommend holding it more than five years on average as a general rule. If your special bottle of wine is a high-end Napa Cab, if it is a uh, Bordeaux, any of the good uh, Italian wines, particularly like a, a Barolo, I wouldn't touch a Barolo for five years, probably not even 10 years, because it's got such high tannin, high acid, high alcohol. Those are the structural components that are gonna make a red wine age-worthy. But that five to 10 year sweet spot is what I would shoot for for most wines. You're not gonna miss out on much opening it at the 10 year mark, even if it might get a little bit better after that. So open it with confidence and enjoy your wines as, as soon as you are ready to enjoy them. Thank you for watching another episode of Wine This Week. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, please like and subscribe. Join me next week as we move on to one of the most unique styles of wine I will cover this entire year. This is the sparkling red wine Lambrusco. Until then, keep trying new wines and as always, cheers.